is grandparents' day. <laughs> Not pushing any blame who made the mistake here, but <laughs> so if you are a grandparent, yes, would you stand? Yeah, great. Well, not just shoot up your hand. Thank you, Ms. Carolyn. <laughs> I see your hand back there. Amen. How about a great grandparent? Shoot up your hand. You're a great grandparent. All right. There you go. How about a great great grandparent? There you go. Amen. Amen. Now we're getting thinner. <laughs> All right. UBC, we're going to pray for the grandparents. Yep. That's what it is. All right. Amen. One of the names of Jesus is the Lamb of God. Yes, sir. And this song is entitled just simply Lamb of God. Fear only son, no sin to hide. But you have sinned him from your side to walk upon this guilty side. And to become the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God. I love the holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of blood they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a frog and sacrificed the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God. I love the holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood. My Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died. But you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to become the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in his precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. that we walk you to service today is a very special service. If you're not familiar with that, that is pictured there as the Lamb of God, that's where Jesus prayed, not my will, but thy will be done, O Father. We study that out in the Gospel. We're going to take communion service, and let me say this before we begin. I want you to listen to the Scriptures very, very closely today. And if you do not have peace... That one, you're a child of God, and two, you're right with God, do not take part of this table. I'm not trying to discourage you. I'm just telling you to get right with God. Now, the preacher said I had to be done by lunch. I said supper. But... <laughs> so let's go. Because <laughs> now I know there won't be long. Uh, this week, I get to make the calls. Next week... <laughs> we'll work it out. You pray I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Some of you'll get that. <laughs> You're battling that same battle. <laughs> your tongue's going before your brain goes. <laughs> hey, we're going to have a wonderful time. This is communion or This Jesus did just before he went to heaven. It's a monumental, 
teaching of the scripture. Uh, I guess the best I can say to you, I'm going to give you part one of probably a, like, a five or six part sermon because I've got more cut out of this sermon than I left in it today. I got a lot more to say than I got time. <laughs> so get with me and stay with what God's going to do here. I believe I got the heart of God. But I believe that it's one of those situations where you're going to have to have some Bible knowledge. If you don't, pay close attention. Some of you are going to look at Leviticus and think, why in the world is he going? <coughs> you're a New Testament Christian. You're like, Leviticus? I fell asleep there. <laughs> For those of you who have read it, you'll understand what I'm telling you. But Leviticus is a wonderful picture of Jesus Christ and what he did as the Lamb of God. We don't have time this morning, but if you went back to chapter, well, start in chapter 10, but on, on down through there. But chapter 13 deals with the topic of leprosy. And leprosy is equated to sin. And only God can deal with your sin. Then you read in chapter 14 where God deals with your sin. And how that God gives you a cure. Sin brings forth death. That's leprosy. God heals the leprosy and gives you life. If, 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 if that doesn't make sense to you, read Leviticus 13 and 14 and meditate upon this service today. I'd like to preach all that to you. But your seats won't endure that. So we're going to chapter 16 where God picks it up and explains to us how this sin is atoned for. An atonement is the Hebrew word kofa, which means a covering. Read with me, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 16. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of Aaron, two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. Now that goes back to chapter 10 if you're not familiar with that. Aaron had four sons. Two of them died because you will sow and you will reap what you sow. If you go against the holy God, you will die in your sin. And we see it today also, as you sow, you reap. Don't let this world deceive you in believing you can live your life any way you want. It won't cost you nothing. In God's eyes, it will cost you. Oh, preacher, I wish I'd stayed home this morning. I'm trying to give you the truth. There's a price for sin. And let me tell you something. After I've walked with God now 48 years, sin is stupid. And I've paid the price. But he ain't killed me yet. Verse 2, thank God for forgiveness. <laughs> Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that ye come not at all times into the holy place within the veil, before the mercy seat, which is the ark, and that he die not. For I will prepare in a cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Now verse 3, you're going to hear these terms a lot. The sin offering and the burnt offering. The sin offering and the burnt offering. It's here. God gives it to you. But you've got to listen. Just like you tell your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, listen! <laughs> oh. He shall put on the holy linen a coat, and he shall have a linen breeches upon his flesh, and he shall gird with linen girdle, and the linen myrtle which shall be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, so he put them on. And he shall take, uh, uh, take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of goats for a sin offering, one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer a bullock for a sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. There's another word you hear often in this reading, atonement. 
It's a covering of your sin. Jesus is your atonement and becomes not only a temporary covering as this day of atonement in Leviticus 16, when you get over to Romans, when you get over to Corinthians, when you get to the epistles, you'll find that He is the propitiation for your sin. 1 John, He is the permanent, permanent covering of your sin. We'll get there. Where are we at? Verse 7? No, 8. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for this, uh, for this cake goat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon the which the Lord shall lot fell and offer him for a sin offering. And the, But the goat on which the lot fell to be a scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord, make an atonement with him and make... Uh, and let the goat and let go for the escape into the wilderness. Verse eleven, please. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering uh, for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock for the sin offering which is for himself. And he shall take a censer from the bur burning coals of the fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense, beaten small, bring it within the veil, and he shall put uh, the incense upon the alt alt fire before the Lord, and the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat uh, that is upon the testimony that he die not. I'm trying to hurry, folks. 14. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and the sprinkling, sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward and before the mercy seat he shall sprinkle of the blood with the, his finger seven times fifteen and they shall then shall he kill then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is uh, for the people and bring the blood within the veil and do that blood as he did of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement of the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of the transgressions in their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goeth in to make the atonement in the holy place until he come out and have made the atonement for himself, for his house and for his congregation of Israel. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it and shall take the blood of the bullock and the blood of the goat and make it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of blood upon it with the finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he hath made an end to the reconciling of the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the light goat. And Aaron shall lay hand, both his hands upon the head of the light goat and confess over him all the iniquity of the children of Israel and all the transgression of their sin, and putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him out away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. And the goat shall bear upon him all the iniquities of the unto the land not inhabited, and he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation and put off he had the linen garments and put on them when he went into the holy place and shall lead them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garment and come forth and offer a burnt offering and a burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. Now jump down to verse 34, the last verse of the chapter, close the chapter out. And this shall be an everlasting statue unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sin once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. Now, let me give you this just real quick. I'll get into Leviticus 16. When you read the Old Testament as a Christian, listen to me, God gives you the details of what you need to know to see his holy character and what he's going to do in the New Testament. The grace age is different than the old. But the Old Testament gives us all the details. Now some of you, as I read that, said, Good night, what does that mean? If you read your Bible, you find out what it means. 
Now, if you have not yet met God, start the New Testament. I would suggest to you the Gospel of John. You can see Christ there. If you're a young Christian, read the New Testament several times through. Then start in Genesis. Don't start in Genesis as a young Christian because you're going to get discouraged because you're like, I don't understand. Listen, I've walked with the Lord 48 years and I'm learning something new every day. I know God, but I can see Him clearer today than when I started at an altar and asked Him to forgive me my sins. God is greater, greater than you can ever imagine. And God's holiness is only known by going to Scripture. God is not who you say He is. God is who He says He is. God's holy character is seen within the Word of God. So here in Leviticus 16, He starts to lay out this relationship. How that sin separates us from God. And from all that God's doing. If you listen over the scriptures we read 14 times, he used the word atonement. I told you that's the Hebrew word cover. That's because this book was written first in Aramaic, Hebrew, and then the New Testament was written in Greek, Koine Greek. I've been to Bible college. I went through five, six hours of Hebrew. I'm thank God for a computer to tell me what I don't know. I barely pronounce English well, as you heard. You give me Hebrew and I pronounce But I can do my research. And I thank God God's got some men that they got nothing else to do except sit around and think about all these things. So I just go to the computer and find these today. I've got 15, 20 hours, I believe, in, in college of uh, in my bachelor degree in Greek. I can't read it no more. I could back in the 70s when I left college. Now it And I thank God that there are men that study it. I only use it as a pastor to help you understand what God was really meaning. If you haven't figured it out yet, the English language is changing. What it used to mean, it don't mean it no more. I'll give you one. And I'm not going to try to offend you. Just tell you what it is. When I grew up, Gay meant everybody was having a good time. It don't mean that no more. You better study to know what it is. So when he says cover or atonement or a covering for your sin here in Leviticus 16, it means that he took a covering once a year for the sins of Israel. And if they didn't deal with their sin, either the high priest or his family, or the children of Israel would die in their sin. He warned them of that. And all, and all the details are there as we read that. And you go back to Leviticus 13 and 14, and as I mentioned to you, meditate on it and find it. In the New Testament, that covering, as it's translated from Hebrew to Greek, then became an eternal covering, and he used the word propitiation. Now, you won't hear that in our culture today. It's only used three times in the New Testament. Romans, and then also in 1 John. 1 John, chapter number 2 and 2, he says this, here on the screen, and he is the propitiation for our sin, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. There's only one that can cover your sin before the holy and righteous God, and that is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. He is the Lamb of God that shed his blood for our sin. He is the propitiation. Come back. Pastor Castle will preach on that later. Back in Leviticus 16, he gives us that analogy, that picture of where we're going with this. How the sins of Aaron's son brought their death how God then said to Aaron, the high priest, if you're going to fulfill the office, now catch this, if you're right with God, the only way to get right with God is doing it God's way. 
You don't get to say, well, I think God will accept this. God said, this is what I'm going to accept. Now that's going to just ruffle your feathers and tear up your pride. But God says, I'll be good right with him. You read Leviticus 16, he lays this thing out. So he begins here. He tells Aaron through Moses, by the word of God, that this atonement can only be done on God's death. Now that's not true in the New Testament. Don't lose Leviticus 16, head for Hebrews chapter number 10. It's clear over to the right hand side of your Bible. Let me give you a few more scriptures here to get your head where it needs to be and where your heart gets you. In Hebrews 10, Hebrews was written to a Jewish nation, a people that had seen the atonement of Christ and the propitiation for their sin, and then God describes to them what that meant to them. Pick it up in verse 15, Hebrews chapter number 10. Wherefore the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their heart, and in their minds will I write it. My friend, if you accept God's forgiveness through the blood of Christ, God will change your heart and mind. And if your mind and heart has not changed, you better check your relationship with God. He said He'll put a law in your heart. Folks, I believe stuff today that I didn't used to believe. Well, amen. You better be there. Back when I had long hair, back when I had hair, back when I had long hair, I mean, I was the only one in the church parking lot the first day I pulled up on my Ducati. That means a motorcycle for you educated people. <laughs> and the only reason I went to that church that morning the first time was I thought I found a girl that was going to be something special in my life. After I left that morning, I told everybody I could find. I didn't speak to God back then. Yep, she ain't worth it. I ain't going back. <laughs> she ain't that pretty. They don't want my wife. It was somebody else. <laughs> don't you read it and get me in trouble verse 17 <laughs> and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more now where the remission of these is there is no more offering for sin don't miss verse 18 19 having therefore brother boldness to enter into the holy holiness by the blood of Jesus by the new and living way which he hath cons consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having your heart sprinkled with the evil conscience, from the evil conscience, and our bodies washed in the pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. You know what that verse is telling you? If you go back to verse six, chapter 16 of Leviticus, he's saying you can only come to God through the high priest coming into the Holy of Holies in the inner part of the tabernacle, and he alone is the only one that can offer forgiveness for his sin, for his house sin, and for the sins of the people of Israel only once a year on the day of atonement. But when Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, came in, and died upon the cross of Calvary, he opened up the door to the Holy of Holies and said, come on in any time, and you can pray to God any place at any time. You can walk into the holy presence of God, kneel down, and claim the blood of Jesus Christ and know your sins are forgiven. Now, your wife may not forgive you, your children may not forgive you, but God will forgive you. You say, well, I'm pretty sure I struggle with that. I don't know if my sins are forgiven. You're not God. God said your sins are forgiven. <coughs> Accept God's forgiveness. I talked about it Wednesday night. A bunch of us are creating our brought up problems in our life because we're carrying burdens that are no longer ours because Jesus Christ took them away from us. And when you abhor things, when you struggle with people, when you 
find yourself in the midst of all kinds of chaos and say, ah, oh, I can't fix it. Nothing's impossible to God. God forgives you. Amen. That's another sermon. Come on. Let's go. Leviticus 16. Leviticus 16. He brings this thing out. What does all this mean? How do we come to this time, this place, where we see the things that God's doing, the atonement that God gave us, the things that God's doing, the ways that God's working in our life. Where do we find God working as he says here? Verse 3, then God brings the details out exactly where we are, how we stand with God. And it says there, thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. There is two offerings here. The sin offering has to come before the burnt offering. You can't have fellowship with God until your sins are forgiven. That's what he's bringing out to us. He's allowing us to see how God's working. Those of you that's Bible read, that truth rings true to your heart. There's a verse over in Philippians it says this in verse 8 of chapter 2 and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross who came and took on the sinful flesh of mankind Jesus did the only son of God he became your sin offering and he is your burnt offering that he brings you in fellowship with God He's the one that sets you free. Down to verse 6. In verse 6 and 16, chapter of Leviticus, he goes on to describe this new relationship, this sin offering. What does that sin offering look like in our life? And Aaron shall offer his bullet for a sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. But catch this, folks. Don't miss the details that God's given you here. You cannot help others until God's forgiven your sin. <laughs> the first sin you have to deal with is you. Now I can go by and say, well, Miss Linda did this to me. Miss Linda, Miss Linda, Miss Linda. And God said, when you're pointing there, there's four more pointing back this way. Now, can I see Miss Linda's sin? Oh, yeah. But I better look at mine first. Yeah. Folks, you walk into this church, some of you visiting with us this morning, think, what? Wow, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Listen, we're all sinners saved by grace. <laughs> there ain't a one of us in here that's not a sinner. And the only way to get our sins forgiven is by the blood of Jesus Christ. you got to deal with your sin. The burnt offering is a fellowship offering. That's where we, we grow, we become the people that God wants us to be. But before Aaron could move to the burnt offering, he had to deal with the sin offering. And that's what verse 6 says. He had to offer for his own self. Listen, simply because I stand behind this pulpit, it don't make me right with God. Preachers are sinners too. And if you want to know, go see my wife. If you want to know, talk to some of these folks that's been with me. Miss Geraldine has been 20... Well, you took off Kentucky for a while, so you didn't know. Miss <laughs> Barb's been with me 22, 23 years in ministry. She can tell you things you don't want to know. And she can tell you things about the preacher before me. She shouldn't. <laughs> but if you walk in the house, God think, well, that preacher's clear up here. He's above. No, he's not. He's a sinner saved by grace the same as you are. Amen. It takes the same blood of Jesus to forgive my sins that does your sins. That's what verse 6 is telling me. Quickly, come on. Let's go. Go on down there. You're 7. Go down to verse 7. I don't have time to reread it, but go down to verse 7. On down, you'll find that your sins are dealt with there. They, they cast lots. And in casting these lots and they make an atonement for the sin, the one is a, a sin offering, that one goat. The other goat is an escape goat. And there's a whole sermon here. But when your sins are forgiven, listen to me closely now, verse 7 through verse 10, when your sins are forgiven, 
God removes them, the psalmist says, as far as the east is from the west. Never to be remembered again. In the depths of the sea, when God forgives your sins, He never brings them up again. This is scapegoat. It's a wonderful teaching, and, I, and we don't have time this morning, but part of our atonement for our sin is God removes our sin. He sends it out into the wilderness. That represents hell. Never to remember it again. It, it's pushed out. I remember it, but God doesn't remember it. And when I claim this book, Faithful is he that promised. I accept his forgiveness and I walk on. Now, can you dig it up? Yep. But it's still under the blood of Jesus Christ. Did I sin? You better believe it. But God forgave me of my sin. If you've confessed your sin and claimed the blood of Christ, send it out in the wilderness and forget it. Move on. It's done with. What's the New Testament tell us? If we confess our sins, faithful and just is he that forgives us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Leviticus 16 goes on down there and expresses there all the work that God's doing. He then takes care of the sins of the people. You'll find it down there in verse 16, 17, 18, 19, 18, 19 in particular. In 18, he goes out to the brazen altar. That's the altar in the outer court. And he then applies the blood seven times there on the horns of the altar. And he shows forth the, the, the forgiveness of God. Uh, here, here's another sermon. We come back later. We'll get this one. I, I caught this in the studies and I hadn't seen this before. But God gave me this and I'm, I'm going to work on it. And whenever God gives me an opportunity to preach again, I'm going to bring this back to you sometime. Do you recognize that Jesus bled from seven parts of his body when he died upon the cross of Calvary? The high priest and the Holy of Holies put the blood on his finger and touched seven times on the mercy seat. When he went out to the outer court in the brazen altar and has the horns, he put the blood on seven times. Woo! That's good stuff. That's good stuff. And I wish you had time to hear it. That offers us. Those of you that's been with us in the church family, you'll recognize this first. It's our memory verse from back in July. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in sin. The one that knew no sin became sin for us and took it as an scapegoat and put it out into the wilderness. That's what God's done for you. That's the working of God. Quickly go down to verse 23 and 24 there in Leviticus 16. He then deals with the burnt offering, the fellowship offering, the time to come together and have dinner with God and have fellowship with God, to spend time in that, in that, that glorious relationship with God, that covenant relationship with God. The burnt offering says that not only have I been forgiven, not only has God removed my sin as far as the east is from the west, buried in the depths of the sea, never to remember it again, God's made us a new creature. Amen. Now we not only have a home in heaven, we as a church family, and if you come to Sunday school this morning, we define that for you. We as a local church family can have fellowship with God. God says, when two or three are gathered together in my name, there I will be also. If you're listening today, and you're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, there's a voice within you called the Holy Spirit of God. That there's witness with your spirit that you are the children of God. And God's moving on you. And God brings conviction. You better listen to the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. You need fellowship with God. That's the burnt offering. God down to verse 34. Leviticus 16, verse 34. He's going to close this out. Now, you got all these details? He says this. These things are everlasting. They're not temporary, as the Day of Atonement was in Leviticus 16. They're now forevermore. They're seeing what God's doing. 1 Corinthians 11, 27 says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. What, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, what he's getting us to see, what he, what he wants you to understand 
if your sins have been forgiven, you need to worship God. You need to give God thanks for His blood and His body. You need to confess your sins. You need to get right with God. The first ones that we're going to deal with this morning in, in the service that God's given us here, before we can take this table, if there's one of you here that don't know Christ your Savior, you need to be saved today. Amen. If you don't listen to God, if you don't listen to that still small voice down in your heart, God's telling you, you're a sinner heading for hell. Amen. You need salvation. Amen. I'm going to ask the Renos to come. We're going to have a word of invitation. They're going to lead us in a song. And allow God to speak to you. Will you stand with us, please? We're coming back. We're, not, we're not, nowhere near done. This is not the end, so don't go nowhere. Page 200. Simple hymn. Only trust Him. My question to you, out of, the, out of what you learned in Leviticus 16 this morning, have you applied the blood of Jesus to your sin? Is there an atonement that is now a propitiation for your sin? You say, I don't know, preacher. I'm not talking to you. Pastor Castle, I'll meet you right here. If you're a woman, one of the ladies will be glad to talk with you. We can pray with you. We can take the scriptures and go over to the conference room and sit down with you. You can be saved by the blood of Christ. Amen. <laughs> took on the humanity. He who knew no sin became sin for us. That we that have accepted this blood and this body have made them whole in Christ Jesus. We are now the righteousness of God. 
Help us to lead this place and walk worthy of the blood and the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. It tells us over in the gospel that after they had taken part of the holy table, the communion table, that they together departed with the song. So the Renaults are coming back. And we're going to sing that song. It's in 295, you need to hear him. No. Jesus <coughs> paid it all. If you missed what the preacher said this morning, don't miss what the songwriter said. When the song is finished, you are dismissed. Will you stand with us, please? Thank <laughs> you.